Hi guys, welcome to this computer system. It's the latest, it's the newest, it's the one for mid-September. And it's the XL because yeah, it definitely contains all the applications that we need to develop. So this is your XL and the video we're gonna make is what do you do after a clean installation? So everything is working fine. You have all your tools with you and then what? right so the wallpapers have changed it already to a fishies one so desktop settings you go and select your wallpapers or do it any other way or select your own wallpapers right get your own folder in there sync it and then you can select whatever you want so that's just a wallpaper icons are the same way this is now xfce but every desktop out there and there will be 23 so the newest will be cute fish will have a way of selecting now cute fish is an exception it's still pretty much on the development so no way to change the icons there but here we just go ahead and go for something else right choose the the, the theme and so on what um, might be interesting to know is this has been documented, right? These videos, uh, you will find more videos about what to do after a clean installation. And there are two things I do, and you just see what you wanna do afterwards. So there is um, a lot of info, how to set and play and also uh, all kind of articles that should, could apply to what do you do after a clean installation now I'm gonna and know what now what things to do after first boot so I could go over all of these but I can also tell you to read these right check out the reflector so the application reflector check out what mirror list is applied now I know out of my head that this is okay this is the mirror Osbeck is the best server I could have so I'm not gonna change anything. Keep as is, right? It works. So all of this, updating your system, have done that already. So an update, it's uh, updating everything from uh, Arclinx repos, Archlink stuff. But if you install more things from the AOR, then it's an up all for you. So that's Paru, and Paru is also going to look at everything that's coming from AOR, Arch User Repository. Learn about Scale, it's, it's meant to be for the core members and, and for the beta testers, but if you use it, know beforehand what it does to your system. Hard code fixer, that might be an issue in the sense that I can sometimes stay the same and that's because of the developers of Inkscape, developer of Melt, and we have no control. There is only one way we can do it. One thing we can do is run an application to fix these icons so they do change and they fall in this case the new mix icon thing edge block is for your uh, your privacy or privacy right security and privacy conkeys if you want them and here we go this is what i'm gonna explain to you as well there are two things that i'll i will do and maybe you get inspired and say oh i want to have that too after every linux operating system people out there install they will change it considerably colors themes wallpapers icons but also applications out remove more in install so these things is normal it's it's linux after all it's freedom you choose whatever you want but i'm gonna show you maybe it's not a bad idea to learn about github now alkalix d has an explanation about github but i'm wondering myself where is these are where would i find these links again about github so i'll probably go for a search oh don't forget the listing guys this is super interesting everything here in one long list control find git github right learn how to script and use github that's the one i wanted to have them to show so you'll see me do all kinds of things and why not make an account free on github and then stay in control so after every clean installation what did eric dubois do 
I made scripts, 108 repositories there. Let's go and have a look at the past, right? Next. Everybody wants their ref to have their own Plank themes or their own scripts after the installation of Linux Mint 18.2, right? 18.1, 17.3. They're all scripts, Ubuntu, all scripts, how to change a Linux distribution after a clean install. Antergos, bye bye, right? 2017. Arch Budgie, Arch Openbox, Antergos i3. So it's all about making how to get the what's the fastest way to get to an operating system that you like. Not that Ubuntu likes, not that Linux Mint likes, right? But uh, the look and the feel that you say, this is what I want. So basically, that is still, it's amazing maybe, but that's still what I do after installation of Arco Linux. After Arco Linux, I will run my own scripts because it doesn't feel right. Doesn't, I, I still need more software, like for example, Spotify. I will not put it on there. It's proprietary, all right? We don't want to push anything like that to you. So after a clean installation of Arco Linux, I'll make a login, right? Uh, you, you create yourself a sign in and login and all that. And then you can make an, something else, an Arco Linux, a name, right? Or anything. This is simple. What I have is a URL, Unified Resource Locator, and then I copy this thing. I have order in my chaos, and it will go in the folder data. Okay. And in here, I'll git clone it. Voila. I've got my scripts. And the only thing I do is run them. I have another script that says, go run this one, go run that one, go run this one. That's it. The, the, the only th thing it does is just run all these scripts. You can do it manually, one by one. And that's what I'm going to edit as well. So maybe you can make a copy paste of this one and you start opening this up and editing. I need to open it up because something changed. So Ale, let's fix the minor things here like this one. Don't like seeing mistakes like that. Everything needs to be perfect. Ah, lost my age. Voila, all right. At this point in time, when I made these scripts, the Atman XB did not exist, the project of building your own ISO. Yeah, be in control. And the project of Arconix ISO, Carly, did not exist either. Nah. Yes. So what I'm gonna do after a clean installation, I'm gonna check, is Flameshot git installed? Yes, no. So no confirm means don't ask me for a yes or a no, I just want it. Need it means if it's already there, just skip it. So Discord is already there, Nomax is there, Git Fint, don't want it anymore, Dropbox, don't want it. So these things are hashtag out, meaning they're not used. Sometimes I tell you a great tip is go to the top here and then the bottom, I mean, and go for Perl, right? But in this case, it's quite visible. This is gray, meaning it's not going to be installed and everything that's colorful is going to be installed. So Spotify is not on the ISO, gonna be on the ISO. InSync is not on the ISO, gonna be now on the ISO. If I wanna play uh, Netflix, it's quite fine. If I wanna play YouTube things from time to time, I need this, right? For Netflix, for YouTube. Vivaldi is what I use as a standard browser. And Firefox for, voila, here it is. It's already there, so it's just gonna skip it. But it's fine, because I want it to be there. Brave is there, Sublime Text 4, Melt Git had been, why Git had been, right mouse click in Tunar. There is this um, look, um, have a look at this, right? Open with Git ahead. 
and it's a great great tool so if you want to go the way for from to, to github to learn about git this is what changed right remember this was not wrong I, I mean this was the indentation was wrong so red means it out it's out and green means i've added i've changed something and you can go back i did change this i changed that i changed this i changed that i changed this it can go out in the past so that's great that's really awesome go back in time and see what i've changed so you can add more stuff but if you put an r you can remove stuff simple as that huh? maybe i can make an example here just for you in the future and say look here we remove applications we do not want right and then I'm not going to remove anything but you delete hashtag pseudo pacman minus r and an s maybe so all the dependency with it i don't know if i can remove anything but um this is what you could do now one of the things i could add in here is the following we've added the tlp tlp what's what are we talking about pseudo backman minus s tlp what's this eric well it's installed on our ISOs by default now in September. Okay, then you go to PAMAC. TLP, what's this about? Linux Advanced Power Management. It's installed, it's red, it's installed. Then you go here, you click here, and you read. Optimize Linux bat laptop battery life and feature rich kind of saving battery, my power, and so on. Reflex you should have by now is go to Arch Wiki TLP. Read more. Okay, read more. And then you start to realize I'm working on a desktop. I'm actually almost working always on a desktop. I prefer it that way. It's easy to open up and add hardware to it. It's not with laptops. So in my case, and that's of course my decision and that's what should be your decision shall i remove it shall i remove pseudo pacman minus rs tlp now the system ctl status of tlp shows us something it's working it's active it's loaded now it might be not necessary but i think I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it anyway, is first remove that file there. There is a link there to a certain folder, I uh, not folder, another file in my user lib or something. Yeah, I think so. And I'm gonna in sudo systemctl disable, first disable the service. It's not a bad idea. You don't need to type service behind it. He'll assume it's about the service the systemd thing but this is me and this this is what i do right this is what i do i test it out first and then it goes in a script so Control shift v you test it out and say okay removed and here we see no we don't see where it's going to but it's this file that's gone etc systemd system multi-user target once tlp service it's gone it's removed the service so it can't be there next time and now I'm gonna remove it as well. Now I'm not sure, so that's why I think it's it no confirm is accepting it. Needed, you can't use that here. It's remove. Control C. I don't wanna see any push uh, any questions, right? I want, just wanna run it, go eat and come back and everything is installed. That's how it should be. Voila. It didn't ask about for a yes or a no. And there are no dependencies. There's the S is there, but it's just TLP that's gone. And now we've changed our script. After a clean installation, I'll run this. I will disable TLP because I'm not on a laptop. I don't have any batteries in my machine and it's there. Voila.
Now, the rest are extra stuff maybe that I would like to install, AOR stuff. Let's see, ah yeah. I installed the VirtualBox for Linux version two, and then I run the sudo hardcode fixer. After every, after all the applications have been installed, I'll tell them to fix icons. Sometimes the icons are wrong. For instance, the NVIDIA icon is wrong. Now, this one goes to here. Have a look what's in here. There might be things in here that you say, oh, that's interesting. Didn't know there was a radio tray. A little small icon there. You just select your music and uh, have fun with it. So in here are VirtualBox things. People in the past told me, Eric, it's just the same as typing this and typing that. Well, there is more to it. The more knowledge you gather, the more things you put into these scripts. And this is an interesting one. VBox manage set extract extra data, global GUI suppress messages all. Remember every single time you put up VirtualBox, you get these border at the top and you have to press it or gone and, 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 and make sure it's gone. And it's like four messages of them and then, uh, you get tired of clicking them away because, right, as a developer, we always do clean installs. You always have to set them again. And you get tired of all these messages. So this is one nice little way to tell, stop sending me those messages. So put everything you learn into scripts. That's my um, way of, of safeguarding the knowledge you've gathered over four years of Arco Linux. They're all in scripts. QMU is installed with a script because, oh my God, is it complicated to install this thing, right? But it's not anymore because once you've figured it out, it's inside the script, you run the script, done. Same here with MPD and CMCP and CMPCPP. <laughs> What a name, couldn't they make it nicer? <laughs> anyway, there might be other things that you say, oh, interesting as well, VMware. Okay, so scripts, put your knowledge in scripts and then it's not finished, all right? And so let's go over, these are icons. Since I'm an icon developer, I install all the icons from time to time, right? But it might be interesting to have a look at what this does. And then start the mint icons install me all these and all the surf and icons install me all those i mean we're over 120 icon themes now so a bit much but as an icon developer right i need to have them and all the rest this is what you learn at d this is just run the script git pull git add say something about your commits and then that's your input and then you push it to the internet bam it's super easy trust me um, so try to learn the GitHub commands because then you have a backup. After a clean installation, you do what I just did. I've shown you Git pull. So now the fun starts, right? This is just, well, it's also interesting, right? Get the right applications in, remove the right applications. Then looks, right? Looks. Do I want to have this look? Well, maybe not. So here are my personal settings. So personal settings are, uh, well, it's not what I wanted to explain. This is personal. <laughs> That's what I wanted to explain. And this is actually about the folder personal. Let's tackle that one first. Super shift enter. Every Arclink system now has a folder no other Linux distribution has a folder called personal. It's empty. That's the point. It's there for all you guys that are using to learn how to build. So at some point in time, there's a learning path, right? So don't start too soon with a project you're not ready yet. But at some point in time, you are ready for the Arclix B. You start building your own ISO. That's what this stands for. Build your own ISO. Personal. Create new themes and create new aliases. Personal one, personal two, create a personal folder on your current system and use the alias personal. Building the Arclinux ISO and use the personal folder for a personal look. Ah, so basically you're putting your 
saved configuration as in this look, right? This is your look. This is how you want to have your system every single time after clean installation. Then there is a way. Put your personal stuff inside the folder personal, build your ISO. If you're not ready for that yet, building your own ISO, there's another way. I've just installed a clean install, right? But this is still empty. Here are my personal settings. What if I was able to copy paste settings? Control H, right? Remember, Control H, hidden folders. What if I can just move them from A to B? If I can detect, and that's melt for you, if I can detect how to change the XFCE with only two files, I have a complete different look. And then we have this alias personal. What does it do? It copy pastes everything that's inside the folder personal to your home directory. So it overrides these two files, that's it. But these two files are what makes it tick. It will install the koi fishes as wallpaper. Anything else? It will install the Surfing Papyrus Casablanca with Team Arc Darkest. And that's it for me, right? A wallpaper and icons and maybe the font here, monospace, and that's it. There are more settings, you see, a lot of more settings. The cursor. And with these two files, you've changed XFCE considerably already. So that's what you do. Make sure that the content that's in here, the .config, this thing will be copy pasted on your own home directory, Eric. And it will override just these two guys, but it will change everything. The look, right? So if this one can be copy pasted in here, of course, you can copy paste control C in here, right? Then everything will be overwritten. I say replace, okay, replace, okay. Next time I will have, well, the same fishies, <laughs> right? The fishies are still there. I already chose the fishies, I like them. But it will be um, overwritten. But the thing was, personal folder was there to just type when you build an ISO, you just type personal, boom, and everything is overwritten. Your files, your .configs of termite, of, of you name it, right? Any application, any setting, you put it in here, type personal after a clean installation, bam, it's there. So this is without using personal. You can actually use the same thing, the same alias, just copy paste it here and you can put it there. But basically, alias puts it from here to here. Anyway, right, possibilities, choices. But the main thing is we want, we don't wanna waste time. We wanna get to a system that we like and love as soon, as quick as possible and as easy as possible. So there are, yeah, choices here, possibilities. And there are lots of looks, right? Personal settings. I've created this look. This is one of the looks. That I've laid, uh, created this one. And I've created this one for Plasma. So all I do is copy paste everything over and that's it. This is the Plasma one. Copy paste, well, not a Git key. Copy paste these two do guys on plasma and it will do its work all the changes will be applied so that's the fun stuff right that's the creative stuff and how do we get the personal well how do we fill this here well by running scripts huh? and in the script you say go copy this to there so now we're going to tackle the personal folder every one has a reason and a choice to show things their way. How do I want to have my bookmarks, for example, here on the site? Okay, so what we have here, 66, well, you know the number 666, right? Uninstall applications, maybe you can use this as well. 
I don't want to have this, don't want to have that, don't want to have this a long list, which I never run this thing, but it's created for you. Remove things, add more lines to it, so you don't have it anymore. Okay? So remove more, basically. Uninstall the Arclick Smith as Steam because it was a long list. <laughs> I've created it for myself, so it's gone in one go. If I want to uninstall it again. These are experiments, right? I don't need any drivers. I have, a, I have hardware, and that's a good tip. Buy hardware that supports Linux. Do it before you spend the money. First, look, learn, Google, DuckDuckGo, whatever, Yahoo. Find information about um, your hardware. And one of those guys, maybe I should just quickly do it. I think it's called Hardware Probe or something. Let's see what we get if we get this hardware probe. I have bought myself Linux hardware. I think, yeah, this is the one, right? This is the way, or what this is how I decided what to buy in July, August, so beginning of July. And I'm 100% sure that it's gonna work because our Red Hat worked already, Asusa worked already and such and such. So I knew already everything was working. So that's a good tip and there may be more websites, but this is actually the only one I think I've found. Um... Now I've, I've also searched for the, the, the chipsets. Uh, one of the chipsets that I could buy a motherboard with a chipset was not yet really supported on Linux, on the kernel. So I had this decision to make, choice to make. Will I take a chipset that's not supported yet, but will be supported? Or do you want to have a motherboard that works just right now? I've chosen the latter, right? L right now. Not gonna take any risks. I wanna have a PC that just works now. So, that's about these things. So. I can remove if I want. I often don't run this thing, but um, it was an experiment for the last months in 2021. What drivers do we need? What drivers should we put on the ISO? Right, but I'm, I'm a lucky guy. I don't need any of these drivers. Everything just works out of the box. Try to buy hardware like that. Here we actually start. 900 is what I really run. If, if the dot bin doesn't exist, create me one. So it does exist, so it doesn't do anything. If the dot fonts isn't there, create me fonts. If the dot icons are not there, and there are no icons there, why do we add dot icons and dot themes? Sometimes you download them and you can't install them like yay, Paru, to the Pac-Man, it's not, it's like a copy paste from a tar etc or something, and you put it in the dot icons, and then your system will find it. It will be in the list of appearance. The icons will be there, the themes will be there. That's how you do it. These two are for Plasma. Plasma does not look at these two folders. It only looks at these two folders. Okay, fine. Now, if the personal folder is not there, you will create a personal folder, but it's there since it's there since July, I guess. So no problem. This is my personal stuff. Data, I just created it, so it will not be created. But in sync is my folder for my Google Drive. So yes, it will make that one. I do like working with Bash RC personal. So Bash RC is great, but at the very end of Bash RC. It says, go load me Bash RC personal, if it exists. So all these aliases, I first tried them out. I put them in Bash RC personal, and then I can run them, test them, and I say, okay. And when you miss them, then you know it should go into Bash RC. If you really say, oh my God, oh yeah, true. It's there, but it's in the Bash RC personal. I can't use it. And then we move it to the real thing. So, no, bad idea, I thought it was a bad idea. <laughs> Here we were. 
Now there's also ZSH, so also ZSH RC personal. I have my own ZSH and I'm pretty sure most of you have their own Bash RC as well. So put everything you like in the Bash RC personal, put everything you like in the Bash RC ZSH RC personal, because it gets overwritten only, of course, if you use the scale command, the scale alias. I have my own variety things. So in variety, great tool, how to select your preferences. I have special preferences. I don't use all of these. I'll get to uh, Wallhaven, is it? is it? Let's have a look, the name that is Wallhaven. I use Wallhaven and the machine just gets wallpapers from me. People always say, Eric, you have such nice wallpapers. I don't spend one second looking for wallpapers. Variety gets them for me. And all I do is Alt F, which means put them in the favorite, copy favorite wallpapers too. And I've changed this one as well. I changed that to my Google Drive. So it's Alt F, it gets copied on Google Drive, it syncs to Google, done. It's saved. And that's how you get four or five gigabytes of wallpapers. <laughs> so some settings for teaching, screen key. So we see what we type if when tiling with the managers. And as you see, the personal settings, personal ISO goes to personal. So I make, I fill in the folder here so I can use it by typing personal. Okay. And this is, if you're wondering, this is just telling the system, hey, don't delete this thing. We want to have the folder personal. Otherwise, if it's empty, yeah, there will be no folder. So that's what I do running all these scripts. I'm looking at time 31 is already quite long. Um, let's have a look. Let's run this one. So personal. 900 is one of the major things what I where I change everything 900 just press enter I always do that so dot and then slash instead of double there oops 900 up and there we go so I have here a1 and a2 which means I also have a personal one, a personal two. So I create my own aliases and you can have 20 themes and change them every single day and just type personal one, personal two, personal three and so on and have your own uh, way of doing, doing things. So um, I guess I need to show you that in the settings. So here are all things that I want to change. The variety configuration, the shell personal, control H, right? Bash RC personal, all the stuff I have. And here it is, alias personal one. Copy everything from the personal, from the directory one to my home directory. So I have plenty of room for the next creation, creative impulses I have. And I'll create a new look and a new look and a new look and a new look and so on. It's fun to be able to switch so quickly. All right, um, pom, 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 pom. anything else? So the ZSH personal, you can have a look and you follow wrong all around. So this one, that one, I think I changed something in the theme, theme random, I don't know, something here might have been changed here, I don't know. But it's my own ZSH RC. And variety configuration has now changed. Not sure if it shows right away. Yeah. In sync, apps, Wallhaven, Wallhaven, abstract, Wallhaven, Wallhaven, CC, top list. I get the top list of all the wallpapers. And surely there will be one you like. So Alt F, shortcut to save it. And this is how you make your system super fast the way you like it. Every single thing that you see, you want to change it, touch it. So 905 install personal settings. This is one I couldn't live without. 
this is one I really couldn't live without. What does it do then? Take a look at what happens to Thunor when I press this one, right? If I had to make all these references to so all these folders that I will have, I don't have them yet, I will have, right? I would be very, very tired and losing a lot of time. So every package, every, sorry, every um, place on my system has a link. When I build my ISOs, I'll get a folder, Arconix out. So Arconix out will be there if I build an ISO. And it will be there when I start downloading all the GitHubs. So this is the same on all my machines and all my SSDs as well, right? 27, 28, cute fish, right? 28 ISOs, 23 desktops. That's where we at now, September 2021. And some of these things, I need to check if they're actually still needed because this was because Firefox showed me an unreadable text in YouTube. But, well, for instance, in YouTube, right? So I, I, I themed it a little bit, a little bit of CSS there. Some fixes. I want to auto start applications. Next time around, I want Plank to be there. I want InSync to be there. Uh, sorry, you are InSync, yeah. Dropbox to be there, maybe. Uh, what else? Discord, Telegram. They all need to boot up, boot up. And how do I do that? By just copy pasting settings, how to start, Discord, InSync, Telegram, Variety. Go put these files of inside .config, how to start. So the conky is there, Variety is already there, but Discord is not there, InkSync is not there, Telegram is not there, Dropbox is not there. It will create there, copy paste them over here, and when I reboot after running all these scripts, all the pop-ups come right, then you need to log in and put in the passwords. Okay. Uh huh. Auto start. So, without making it longer than it needs to be, this one, if you if you choose BTRFS, it's going to install some of the applications. This is still a work in progress. I'm not fit to teach in BTRFS yet. I mean, there's no knowledge yet. I had some bad experiences with it and I just left it alone. <laughs> But at some point in time, I'll, I'll tackle it again. So BTRFS, um, if, if, right, it will look if it is installed. If it's not installed, BTRFS, I mean, if it's not used, I mean then, right, during Calamari's installation, it says so. It's not formatted as BTRFS, so the packages will not be installed. Because I see sometimes people who install Grub BTRFS and they have X4. That's not gonna work right message was on discord i think it was remove that thing right it's, it's you always will get the message that it um, was well, some kind of message from the developer saying hey this can't work you need to have ptrfs so experimental right just uh, make a note this might mean not the right settings to do things work in progress there some fonts maybe auto connecting people with Bluetooth sets, I want to change something. I've, in the past, we had to all change fix one and fix two, not needed anymore, I believe. For me, I don't think this is needed either, but it has been an option to enable this thing and add it to the Bluetooth, Bluetooth clear.conf to make my Boost headsets, Bluetooth headset better right so if you find fixes online people tell you something in Ubuntu try it out is it okay fine then you make a script and put the knowledge in there that's basically what this is figuring out how do I make my printer work and then you put it in there afterwards because then you want to run it again because you'll forget again not with scripts not with github push to github and run it afterwards 
So always um, read this with care. I mean, I'm not perfect. So see if it's correct or not, test it out. This is for the Corsair um, applications, uh, sorry, uh, Corsair keyboards with all these uh, rainbow colors things. So you can change all these colors. Install key servers. I'm still wondering if key servers are a problem because beginning of July we got uh, responses from the key servers, certificate problems and all that. Let's quickly have a look if it's still the case. So Pac-Man, how, how was it again? Uh, Pac-Man key, refresh or something, refresh keys, yep. voilà. and yep, there we go again. Here we have errors, 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 errors. So the key servers are not okay. So whatever, we'll wait for the key servers to, to work again. For some of them, it seems that the Ubuntu thing works. For others, it doesn't seem to be the case. So we'll see how it evolves over time. So have a look at it. It's a very long video now, 41, but I think it's an important one, right? Clean install is great because we want to learn on Linux and we break it. And that's cool also because it's learning money and fine. Next time around, you will not do this or you will not do that. But after all, an installation is super fast, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, depending on CPU, power, internet, and so on. But then you want to have yeah, your tweaks, your configs, your personal look, and this might be might be a way to do it. Run scripts, because you can tell one script to start running this one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. And that's basically what I've done, and maybe we should end with this one. There's another one that was referenced here, Arco Get Started. So the only thing you need to know from us is what number is it currently? It's a script that we use for the core members, of course, but also for the beta testers. So bit.ly, arco get started. We have, we have a new computer system, new system, and we want to get started super fast, right? Arco get started number eight at this point in time, we're August and so on. Mm -hmm. Fine, enter. We'll share a file, get started tar gz, direct download, and in here is even more knowledge about scripting. Show in folder, right mouse click, extract here, delete, get started. Basically, this is what I do. Minimal start here, Eric. It's going to update everything, everything from Arch Linux, Arcolix, everything from AOR, but everything is coming from our repo, so nothing to do. I'm gonna create a folder called data. I'm gonna create a folder called VirtualBox VMs. I'm gonna make sure that everything is executable. And it's copy, no, it's not make, it's copy. So I've, I've already copied something over. So data is copied over, Akali, Archi, Arco, ALCI. Everything is copy pasted over, lots of scripts in there. And here I get my Arcolinux Nemesis, git clone. And then I run everything in Arco Nemesis. I run this one, that one, this one I skip, this one I skip, this one I skip. I get my Arcolinux Nemesis personal, CD, and go in there and run all these scripts. So from time to time, I just hashtag one out. Like the, for, for example, this one, do I still need a Bluetooth headset fix? I don't think so anymore, right? But I shouldn't do change this here. I should change this on my ISO builder. And this will always work in, in the sense that um, it will just skip. If it's X4, it just says, no, won't do anything. So I can run it always. How to start everything. Maybe it give you ideas and start working on this Sunday on your script of your own. All right, I'm out and um, have fun, learn, learn, have fun, and uh, enjoy. All right, cheers.